In the video 2 of PMF IS environment video series, we will be dealing with chapter 3 of PMF IS environment hard copy. In chapter 3, we have levels of organizations in ecology and principles of ecology. We will be studying these in detail and we will also be answering a few questions from these sections. So what is ecology? To understand this, we need to know what is ecosystem and what are the interactions that are taking place within an ecosystem. In the previous chapter, we have seen that environment is a natural component in which biotic and abiotic factors interact among themselves and with each other. Hence, in an environment, there are three kinds of interactions between biotic components, between abiotic components and between biotic and abiotic components. The interactions in the ecosystem are very similar except that the biotic components play a major role. Hence, here we have two kinds of interactions. The interactions between two biotic components or between a biotic and a abiotic component. Coming to energy flow or trophic levels and nutrient cycling or biogeochemical cycling, we will be seeing these in the future chapters. So what is ecology? Ecology is nothing but the scientific study of the interactions that are taking place within an ecosystem. So what are the interactions? Interactions between two organisms or between biotic and biotic components and the interactions between organisms and the environment, which is nothing but the interaction between biotic and abiotic components. Let us understand this with a simple tree ecosystem. In a tree ecosystem, there are several biotic and abiotic components. Air, soil, sunlight are example for abiotic components. The tree primary consumer, secondary consumer, microorganisms are example for biotic components. There are various interactions that are taking place between these factors and the scientific study of these interactions is what we call as ecology. Coming to topic one of the chapter, levels of organization in ecology. In the universe, there are various levels of organizations. It starts with atoms and ends with universe as a whole. In between, there are various levels where life is a dominant factor. These levels of organization where life is a dominant factor are the ones which we study under ecology. The first level in ecology are individuals or species. They are the ones which are capable of interbreeding. That is, they are able to produce offsprings through sexual or asexual means. Many such individuals together give rise to a population and many such populations together form a community. There are two kinds of communities, major communities and minor communities. Major communities are the ones which are capable of independent existence. Though they are dependent on the surroundings for various needs, but still they can survive on their own for a very long duration even though there are certain adverse effects in the surroundings. Whereas in case of minor communities, they are not capable of independent existence. Let us understand this with the help of a rotten log of wood which forms a habitat for mushrooms, mosses and various other microorganisms. Here, in case of a forest fire, the entire community gets lost. Thus, we can say that the minor communities are greatly dependent on the factors that are taking place in the surroundings. Whereas in case of major communities, they are self-sustainable for a very long duration. And many such communities give rise to an ecosystem and many such ecosystems together form a biome. A biome is a biogeographic region with naturally occurring community of flora and fauna. And the biome are a part of the biosphere. Biosphere is that component of the earth which supports life. It could be lithosphere, hydrosphere or atmosphere. Let us now look at what ecological niche is. A niche refers to the unique functional role and position of a species in its habitat or ecosystem. In the previous video, we have seen what habitat means. It is the preferred physical environment of a species and many such habitats together form a ecosystem. A habitat may be shared by many species, whereas a niche is always specific to a single species. For example, in this diagram, we have three bird species which feed on different parts of the tree. For example, we have Cape May Warbler, which feeds on the top levels of the tree and Yellow Rumped Warbler, which feeds on the bottom levels of the tree. Now, if a species which feeds on the top level tries to compete with the ones that is feeding somewhere in the middle, then there would be a competition between the two species and one would replace the other. The ones that has replaced species would settle to the niche and the one which is replaced would find a new niche. Hence, we can say that a habitat may be shared but a niche is always unique for a species. And there might be various niches, for example, a habitat niche where it lives and a food niche, how it feeds and survives and then a reproductive niche, how it reproduces, the mode of reproduction and many similar aspects. Coming to the differences between niche and habitat, if habitat is like address for a species, 
niche is like a profession or a functional role that it performs in its habitat a niche is always unique for a species like we have seen due to competition no two species can have a common niche whereas a single habitat may be shared by multiple species coming to the next concept ecotone we know that in the levels of organization there are various biomes and major ecosystems and the transition zone between two biomes or two major ecosystem is what we call as ecotone since ecotone is a transition zone to, between two ecosystems or biomes it has the characteristics of both the biomes let us look at the properties an ecotone may be narrow or wide for example in the case of an ecotone which forms the boundary between the tropical rainforest and the savanna deciduous forest system here the ecotone is quite narrow whereas in case of tropical savanna and the sahara desert the ecotone is quite wide the transition zone or the ecotone is called as zone of tension because this is where the organisms from either of the communities come and interact in some ecotones the species in the ecotone might be very different from the surrounding communities for example in the mangroves which forms an ecotone between an aquatic ecosystem and a terrestrial ecosystem the mangrove species are available only in the ecotone region they are not available either in the aquatic ecosystem or the terrestrial ecosystem and since an ecotone is a zone of tension it has greater biodiversity and productivity compared to the surrounding ecosystems for example here the marshland is an ecotone between an aquatic ecosystem and a terrestrial ecosystem and the marshland has productivity which is much higher compared to the productivity of the aquatic ecosystem and the terrestrial ecosystem and in some cases certain species in the ecotone might be greater in number compared to those in the surrounding communities for example in a marshland ecosystem there would be frogs or certain amphibians which might be larger in number compared to their population in the terrestrial or aquatic ecosystems such an effect is called as edge effect so edge effect can be defined as a situation where a particular species is higher in number in the ecotone compared to the surrounding ecosystems and the species which are higher in number in the ecotone compared to the surrounding ecosystems are called as edge species ecocline is very similar to ecotone the one key difference is that ecocline is a zone of transition between two minor ecosystems we have seen that ecotone is a zone of transition between major biomes or major ecosystems and here we have a mountainous ecosystem where we have minor coniferous forest and the tundra region these are relatively small areas and the transition zone between them is very sharp and such a transition zone is what we define as ecocline coming to the next topic of the chapter principles of ecology here we will be studying various processes ranging from adaptation to evolution so what is adaptation adaptation is a process by which an organism is able to overcome the challenges posed by the environment in which it lives to overcome these challenges an organism would have underwent various changes these changes could be morphological where the changes are to the form or structure of an organism or its parts physiological where the changes are in the form of changes to the bodily functions or behavioral changes which are relatively quicker let us understand these changes with the help of a few examples in the taiga vegetation the leaves are needle like and the branches are sloping this is an excellent adaptive mechanism where the tree would avoid accumulation of snow if the leaves were broad and the branches were non sloping then in the winter season snow would get accumulated on the branches and the branches would break to prevent that the taiga vegetation has evolved in a way that the leaves are needle like and the branches are sloping similarly in the desert vegetation the plants have deep roots this is an adaptive mechanism where the tree can have its roots deep into the soil in search of groundwater likewise the leaves have thick cuticle on their surface to prevent loss of excess amount of water in the form of evapotranspiration similarly there would be leaves which are needle shaped or a plant would not have any leaves this is again a mechanism to prevent loss of water in the form of evapotranspiration another excellent example for adaptation is long neck of a giraffe during the evolution of a giraffe when the trees were shorter the neck of the giraffe remained shorter but as the time passed the trees grew higher as a result the giraffe's neck got longer so this is an adaptive mechanism by giraffe to better survive in its environment similarly we have adaptive mechanism for mammals in the colder climates where their bodily parts are either short or offer small surface area to prevent excess loss of heat and this particular mechanism is called as allen's rule the next example is hyperthermophiles 
hypothermophiles are the organisms which are capable of surviving even in extreme temperature conditions the examples are arch bacteria which are capable of living in hot springs where the temperature can be in excess of 70 degrees celsius this is possible because these organisms have outer membranes made of lipid linked structures which are extremely rigid and can maintain their structural integrity even in high temperatures coming to the physiological adaptation mechanisms or changes to the body functions we have examples like acclimatization and sweating when it's very hot we sweat so that we can cope with the high temperature conditions surrounding us this is an example for adaptation through physiological changes the next process in principles of ecology is variation variations are induced by changes in genetic makeup due to addition or deletion of a specific gene this is different from adaptation in the sense that in adaptation there may or may not be changes at the genetic level whereas in variation the very changes occur due to changes in genetic makeup the variations might also be due to mutations so mutation is a process where there is an error in dna replication or there is a damage to a gene due to factors like excessive exposure to uv light or due to excessive exposure to ionizing radiation likewise variations could be brought about by climatic changes over a prolonged duration and variations could also be brought about by geographical barriers for example in humans depending on the region where the humans have survived there are different human races this is due to variations at the genetic level of the human race similarly we have another process called as adaptive radiation where a single ancestral species would have been diversified into multitude of new forms to overcome various environmental challenges created in their new habitat or ecological niche here for example we have an ancestral bird species it has radiated into multitude of new forms where each form has a different structure or morphological features which have evolved to overcome certain challenges posed by the environment these changes have happened due to changes in the genetic makeup of the ancestral species here for example we have birds whose nutrition is mostly from nuts and seeds to crack the nuts and seeds the beaks have to be stronger so here the beaks are shorter and stronger in another case probing insects they have to probe for insects through thick thickets and for that they need a long beak so here the birds have a long beak the next important process is speciation speciation is a process by which new species are formed and evolution is the process which brings about speciation here we can see speciation in hominid species and speciation in salamanders the speciation in salamanders has occurred due to geographic isolation as a result this kind of speciation is called as allopatric speciation it is also called as geographic speciation in allopatric speciation when an ancestral species turns into two forms separated by geographic isolation there is a significant genetic drift between the two forms that is the genomes have changed significantly and eventually when the two forms meet they can no longer interbreed so the ancestral species has given rise to two species of salamanders this is an example for allopatric speciation whereas in humans that is hominid species we have three species two extinct species homo erectus homo habilis and the present species homo sapiens here the speciation is brought about with passing time as there is a change in genetic makeup from one generation to another this could be due to multitude of factors like adaptation or climatic changes and various other changes to the environment the next important process is natural selection it is synonymous to the phrase the fittest survives it is a process in which species adapt to their environment by naturally adopting best of the variations we know that a species could give rise to various subspecies or variations each of these variations would differ in their genetic makeup and one of these variations would be best suited for a particular environment or an ecological niche in such a case the best variation has highest chances of survival in that particular environment or ecological niche coming to evolution it is a process which brings about speciation and speciation as we have seen occurs due to change in genetic makeup or heritable characteristics with each passing generation and evolution involves various processes like natural selection adaptation variation mutation and other processes which bring about these changes let us now look at a few questions from this chapter which of the following is the correct order of ecological organization we have seen that it starts with individual which gives rise to populations and different populations gives rise to communities and different communities gives rise to ecosystem and then we have biomes and biosphere so the correct answer for this is 
D. Community, ecosystem, biome, and biosphere. Coming to the second question, which of the following statements are correct? Individuals capable of exchanging genes are called species. True. A community of interbreeding organisms is called a major community. This is wrong because a community of interbreeding organisms are called as population. Major communities are entirely independent. This is also false. They are relatively independent, not entirely independent. So the answer for this question is one only. Coming to the next question, the smaller ecological units that are not individually self-sustaining and rely on interactions with other communities are called. We have seen that the major communities are relatively independent, whereas the minor communities are entirely dependent on their surroundings. So the answer is B. Which of the following is are true about ecosystems? It is the community of organisms together with the environment in which they live. True. Ecosystems are generally larger than the biosphere. False. Because all ecosystems together are a part of biosphere. In the ecosystem, the flow of energy, nutrients and materials are cyclic. True. So the answer is 1 and 3. Consider the following statements. A biome can comprise a variety of habitats but not vice versa. True. A niche is unique for species while many species share the habitat. True. Several species can live in a habitat but a niche is always specific to a single species. True. Habitat is the physical environment in which an organism lives. True. And here the question is incorrect answer. So none of these statements are incorrect so the answer is none. Consider the following statements. Precipitation, moisture and temperature within each biosphere leads to the formation of biomes. Within biomes, regional and local variations account for the formation of habitats. Both the statements are true. Here the question says incorrect. So none is the answer. Which of the following terms describes not only the physical space occupied by an organism but also its functional role in the community of organisms? This question was asked in previous UPSC paper. The answer for this is ecological niche. We have seen that ecotone is a transition zone between two biomes, habitat is the preferred environment for a species and home range is the place in which the species function. For example, if you take the example of a bird, it might be living in a tree but it would travel to a distant lake in search of food and return back to the tree in the evening. Entire range in which the species operates is called the home range. So the answer for this is ecological niche. With regard to ecological niche, consider the following statement. A niche is a unique functional place or role of a species in an ecosystem. True. Some species tend to have an exact identical ecological niche in an ecosystem to maintain stability and continuity. This statement is false because many species might share a habitat but a niche is always unique to a single species. Higher the number of niches in an ecosystem, the more stable is the ecosystem. It means that one single ecosystem is being utilized by various species. As a result, the entire ecosystem is very stable. At the same time, if there are many niches in an ecosystem, it means that the biodiversity is higher because there are significant number of flora and fauna which are operating in the same ecosystem. This point is also correct. Correct statements 1, 3 and 4. Consider the following mangrove, lagoons, estuary, riverbank, marshland. Which of the following is are considered as ecotone? So the answer for this is all. Consider the following statements regarding deep sea benthic zones of oceans. In the previous examples, we have seen that the benthic zone is the bottom layer of the aquatic environment. It is characterized by uniformly low temperatures, true. Most organisms in this zone are carnivorous in nature. This area is characterized by persistent darkness, true. It is the region extending between high tide line and low tide line. This is false. The intertidal zone is what we call when the region is between high tide line and the low tide zone. And the benthic zone is what comes after this intertidal zone. The answer for this is 1, 2 and 3 only. D. Which of the following is the best description of a zone of gradual but continuous change from one ecosystem to another when there is no sharp boundary between the two in terms of species composition? The answer for this is ecocline. We have seen that ecotone is a transition zone between two major biomes or ecosystems whereas ecocline is a transition zone between two smaller ecosystems. Ecotype is nothing but a specific kind of species which is unique to a particular habitat or ecosystem. On the other hand, ecozone is nothing but biogeographic realms. There are total eight biogeographic realms in the entire world. These are the ones which are throughout their evolutionary process were separated by significant geographic barriers. Consider the following statements about ecotone. It is a zone of tension between two or more diverse ecosystems. True. 
edge effect occurs when terrestrial size of ecotone is much larger than the adjacent ecosystems falls edge effect occurs when the species in the ecotone is much higher in number compared to the similar species in the either of the ecosystems mangrove forests and grasslands are examples for ecotone true population density of some species may be more in ecotone areas than the adjoining species these are the species which we call as edge species so this point is also correct here the question says incorrect answer so the answer should be two only estuaries are biologically productive regions because we have seen that estuaries are wetlands which are ecotones because they occur between a major terrestrial and aquatic ecosystem so they re they receive nutrients from both the ecosystems as a result they are biologically productive which of the following best describes the term edge effect it refers to the changes in population or community structures that occur at a boundary of two habitats so the answer is a it refers to change in population or community structures that occur at the boundary of two habitats with reference to ecology which of the following best describes allen rule we have seen that in the colder climates the animals have lesser surface to volume ratio to prevent heat loss it states that mammals from colder climates generally have shorter ears and limbs to minimize heat loss the answer is c which of the following is are examples of adaptation arch bacteria flourish in hot springs and deep sea vents we have seen these are called as hyperthermophiles every winter thousands of birds migratory birds visit bharatpur bird sanctuary this is an example for behavioral change or behavioral adaptive change people living at high altitudes have a higher rbc count than people living in plains as we move to a higher altitude the oxygen levels in the atmosphere decreases to overcome this problem the body produces higher number of red blood cells so this is an example for physiological adaptive change so the answer must contain all 1 2 and 3 c coming to the next question how do plants in the desert adapt to conditions of low moisture leaves and stems are succulent and water storing succulent means juicy or thick this point is true in some plants even the stems contain chlorophyll for photosynthesis in certain desert plants there would not be leaves and the stem would take up the function of photosynthesis some plants germinate and reproduce only during rainy season this is also true because in the dry season the seeds are protected under thick protective layer and they remain there until the wet season arrives and they germinate once the rainy season starts so this point is correct so the answer for this question is all coming to the next question consider the following statements during times of drought the plants voluntarily slow down their own growth this is an adaptive mechanism where the plants survive in a arid climate by inhibiting their own growth the point is correct coming to the reasoning during droughts plants secrete abscisic acid which acts as growth inhibitor this is also true both a and r are true and r is the correct explanation of a coming to the next question choose the incorrect pairs this is a previous prelims question sloping branches and needle like leaves this is an adaptive mechanism in taiga vegetation deep roots this is an adaptive mechanism in desert vegetation waxy stem thick leaves or no leaves this is again adaptive mechanism in desert vegetation canopy canopy is an example for the crown cover which is a distinct feature of tropical vegetation so only point 4 is correct here it is asking about incorrect pairs so the answer is 1 2 and 3 only c coming to question number 20 consider the following statements about hibernation it is a state of inactivity and metabolic depression in endotherms hibernation is a state in which the metabolism in an organism is suppressed to overcome various adverse environmental conditions or shortage of food so this point is correct endotherms are also known as warm blooded animals which include mammals and birds they are capable of regulating their body temperature on the other hand we have cold blooded animals which are also called as ectotherms they include reptiles and amphibians they cannot regulate their body temperature point 1 is correct the process allows to conserve energy in times of food shortage true electrical activity in the brain is completely ceased during hibernation this point is wrong so the answer for this question is 1 and 2 only in the context of adaptive radiation consider the following statements and choose the correct one it is the accumulation of differences between groups of organisms that lead to the creation of new different varieties of species false it is the process in which organisms diversify from ancestral species into multitude of new forms due to environmental challenges so this is what we term as adaptive radiation so the answer is b coming to question number 
which of these is are necessary for evolution to occur in species on earth there should not be any variability in traits or a gene within a given population this statement is wrong because for evolution to occur there should be variability the traits to be evolved must be heritable between generations we have seen that speciation occurs due to two factors one is allopatric speciation due to geographic barriers and genetic drift and in another case due to gene transfer between successive generations so either of these points would be true so the answer for this question is two only which of the following factors is are responsible for lower species diversity in temperate regions than in tropics frequent glaciations in temperate regions true greater seasonal variation in temperate region the diurnal as well as seasonal variation in temperature is quite extreme in the temperate region and this is also a factor behind lower biodiversity low availability of solar radiation in the temperate regions true so the answer for this question is all the term sixth mass extinction is often mentioned in news in the context of which of the following the answer for this is d mankind's over exploitation and misuse of natural resources which of the following is are true the presence of specific features or certain habits which enable a plant or animal to live in its surroundings is called evolution false it's not evolution it's adaptation the surroundings where an organism lives is called its habitat true small changes that takes place in the body of a single organism over short periods to overcome small problems due to changes in the surroundings is called as acclimatization true gradual changes in an organism to survive in an environment is called adaptation this is wrong because gradual changes that occur in an organism to survive in the environment is called evolution and not adaptation so the answer for this is 2 and 3 only question number 26 evolution involves which of the following processes we have seen that evolution involves adaptation adaptive radiation variation mutation natural selection and speciation all these processes involved in evolution of a species so the answer is all evolution involves which of the following processes genetic drift mutation and speciation we have seen that mutation gives rise to variations so yes this is involved in evolution and we have seen that in uh, allopatric speciation genetic drift is the key factor hence this also leads to evolution so the answer for this is all the evolutionary force that selects the best of variations is called natural selection consider the following pairs and choose the incorrect one principles definition adaptation rapid physical changes of an organism to survive in an environment is called adaptation this is wrong because the physical changes are very gradual and not rapid in adaptation we have seen that in morphological changes that occur in adaptive mechanisms acclimatization is a gradual change in physical and chemical makeup of an organism to survive in an environment this is also wrong because acclimatization is not gradual but rapid variation alteration in the nucleotide sequence of a gene we have seen that in variation there is changes in genetic makeup that is alteration at the gene level so this is true mutation differences between individuals of a particular species this can be explained where due to a mutation a gene would go wrong and a person would appear deformed and hence he or she might look different from the normal human beings so we can say that differences between individuals of a particular species can be caused by mutation the option 4 is also right so the answer is incorrect ones 1 and 2 only that's it from chapter 3 of pmfis environment